Let's sum the reciprocals of squares. There's a few different approaches to trying to determine whether or not this series converges or diverges. So here's the series I'm interested in. The sum n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. And that series converges if and only if the series n starts at 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared converges. Right, whether or not I include the n equals 1 term doesn't affect the convergence of the series at all. So let's try to analyze this series now. We'll note that 0 is less than or equal to 1 over n squared is less than or equal to 1 over n squared minus n. I mean at least as long as n is 2 or more. I don't want to plug in n equals 1 here because then I'll be dividing by 0. But this is true because this denominator is smaller than this denominator, so this fraction is bigger than this fraction. Now what does that mean about the series? Well, I can do a comparison test then. So by comparison test, the sum of 1 over n squared minus n, n goes from 2 to infinity, converges implies that the smaller sum, the sum n goes from 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared converges. So now I want to analyze the sum of 1 over n squared minus n. Well, it's going to turn out that this series telescopes. Let's see how that goes. So the series that I'm interested in analyzing is the sum n goes from 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared minus n. Right, I'd like to evaluate that series. Now how can I do that? The trick is to notice the following. What's 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n? I can put that over a common denominator. So this is n over n times n minus 1 minus n minus 1 over n times n minus 1. And now that I've got it over a common denominator, I can do this subtraction. This is n minus n minus 1 over n times n minus 1. Well, n minus n minus 1, that's just 1. And the denominator is n squared minus n. n squared minus n. So evaluating this series is really the same as evaluating 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n, the sum of these. And before plunging in with the infinity on top, let's just do this from 2 to some value big N. So what happens when I plug in 2? I get 1 over 2 minus 1 is 1 minus 1 over 2. And then I plug in N equals 3. I get 1 over 3 minus 1, which is 2, minus 1 over 3. And then I plug in uh, N equals 4. And I get 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. And then I keep on going until I plug in n, and I get 1 over big N minus 1 minus 1 over n. But lots and lots of stuff cancels. This is exactly what I mean by telescoping, right? What cancels? This minus a half and this a half, this minus a third and this a third, this minus a fourth will cancel something in there. Everything else in the middle will die. There'll be a 1 over n minus 1 term with a negative sign in front of it, which will cancel this. The only thing that survives is this initial term, 1 over 1, and this last term, minus 1 over n. So the sum of this little n from 2 to big N is this. Now how do I evaluate then the infinite series? Well, I just take a limit as big N goes to infinity. So the limit as big N goes to infinity of the sum little n goes from 2 to big N of 1 over little n minus 1 minus 1 over n is the limit as big N goes to infinity of 1 over 1 minus 1 over big N. Well, as big N goes to infinity, 1 over n, this term is going to 0. So it's 1 over 1 minus something very close to 0. This limit is 1. And that means that this original series not only converges, but I know its value. Its value is 1. Why is that significant? Well, knowing that this series converges then means that this series 
converges. And if this series, little n from two to infinity of one over n squared converges, that means that the original series that I'm interested in, the sum of the reciprocals of the squares, that converges. And that's great, but that's not the only way to determine that this series converges. So yeah, I wanna apply Cauchy condensation, but to what series? Well, I'm still working on this series, the sum of one over n squared, n goes from one to infinity. But instead of looking at that series, I'm gonna write it like this, the sum of just the a sub n's, where a sub n is one over n squared. And I wanna note what about this sequence a sub n? It's a sequence all of whose terms are positive, and it's a decreasing sequence. So it's the sort of thing that I'm allowed to apply Cauchy condensation to. And what does Cauchy condensation say? Well, it says that this series converges if and only if the condensed series converges, if and only if the sum of two to the n times the two to the nth term n goes from zero to infinity converges. So what's the condensed series in this case? So I'm just asking what's this series in this case? Well, that's the sum n goes from zero to infinity of two to the n times, what's the two to the nth term of this sequence? It's one over, instead of n, I'm gonna write two to the n squared. But I can simplify this. This is something times one over the same thing squared. Well, that's the sum, n goes from zero to infinity, just one over two to the n. And does that series converge or diverge? Well, that series is just a geometric series. Right? So this series, we've already seen this series converges, and in fact, we know its value, its value is two. And consequently, because this condensed series converges, so too must the original series converge. The sum of one over n squared, as n goes from one to infinity, converges. So we've seen that this series converges by comparing to a telescoping series that we know converges, and by using Cauchy condensation. And there's other ways. We could also have used the integral test. So we're seeing lots of different methods to prove the same result. The sum of one over n squared, n goes from one to infinity, converges. And usually we're happy with that. Usually we're happy just knowing that a series converges or diverges. But in this case, we can ask the more refined question. To what does this convergent series converge? So numerically, right, the sum of the first two terms, one over one squared plus one over two squared, is five quarters. And we can keep on going. The sum of the first three terms, some of the first four terms, five terms, six terms, seven terms, eight terms, nine terms, a little bit over 1.5. We could try summing a lot more terms too, right? Here's the sum of the first 100 terms, about 1.63. Some of the first 200 terms, first 300, 400. You know, if we add up the first thousand terms, right? So one over one plus one over two squared plus one over three squared, da da da, plus one over a thousand squared, then we're getting just above 1.64. The exact answer is really pretty surprising. Numerically, right, we're getting about 1.64 after adding up the first thousand terms. Pi squared over six is about 1.64, and it turns out that the sum of the reciprocals of the squares is pi squared over six. That this series evaluates to pi squared over six is a shocking result. It should really leave you wondering why, why is something like that true? And unfortunately, we have to wonder just a little bit longer.